In this video, we're going to show you how to get Zoom through Cambrian's Zoom portal. To get started, you'll navigate to cambriancollege.zoom.us. Once there, you'll click on the Sign In button to configure an account. This is where you'll enter your Microsoft information. This is the same information that you use to log into your computer. So use your college email and your password that you use to log into your computer. Congratulations, you've set yourself up with a Zoom account. From here, you may want to go and adjust some of your settings. To do that, we go into Profile, and here is where you can access all of your personal information. One of the most useful things to do in Zoom is to go and change your personal meeting ID number. This number right here. By default, Zoom assigns you a number but you can actually go in and edit it and put your own number in. Once you're assigned in, it's very easy to host a meeting. Up here in the top corner, you see with host a meeting, you can actually do this with video on, off, or screen only. I'm gonna choose it to do it with video off. Zoom now checks to see if you've ever run the software before and have the app installed. If you don't, follow the prompts and download and run Zoom. You do not require administrator privileges to do this. On this computer, I have already installed Zoom, so I'm just going to open Zoom Meetings. This little dialog will come up that'll say Join with Computer Audio or Test Speaker and Microphone. I'm just going to click on Join with Computer Audio. Most webcams have microphones built into them, and most computers and laptops have speakers, but some desktops may not. This is the Zoom interface. Right here we have our audio. Next to it we have our video settings. My microphone is this microphone right here that I'm using, this Yeti microphone. I'm just going to click on that. Check testing. And now you'll see the little green bar goes up and down as I talk. Start video. There's actually no webcam on this computer because it's a desktop. But if it was a laptop or if I had a webcam installed, I could click on this to start my video. You'll also notice that in the top that I have recording going. That is because in my settings, I actually have it set up to record automatically the second I start a meeting. If you don't have that set up, down here in the corner is where you start and stop your recording. I'm just going to pause it for now. And you'll see it says recording paused. To resume recording, I just hit the resume recording button. You'll notice that if I take my mouse off of the screen, everything disappears. But the second that I put my mouse back on it, everything comes back. To stop the recording, I'm just going to hit stop recording. A prompt comes up asking if we want to stop their Zoom recording to the cloud. We say yes. What Zoom does is it's now processing the video in the background on its servers. And once it's done, an email will be sent to me with a link with the recording. Now from this original page, we can also join a meeting. To join a meeting, we just click on join a meeting. And then we enter our meeting ID or personal link name. So I'm going to put that in now. And hit join. Same procedure, the prompts. Now on the screen, you also see we have a couple of options down here. Join audio, this is the computer audio that we're connected to. This is the option that you'll want to use most time. We have share and invite others. Invite others allows us to send an email to people and copy the URL and send it to people. You can also invite people from this link down here. Another way people can join your meeting is to go to Zoom us on a web browser and click join meeting. This is also where they'd enter the meeting ID information and be able to join you. Another great thing about Zoom is that it has a ton of resources. If you go up to resources right up here and go to video tutorials, there is literally a plethora of actual training videos that tell you how to do pretty much everything in Zoom and they're really well done. The last button, share, is very interesting. It can be accessed here and or here and what it allows you to do is to share either your screen, a whiteboard, an iPad or an iPhone, uh, various things that you can actually share, including applications. If you want to share something like a YouTube video, one of the things that you need to do is to click Share Computer Sound. So any sound that's coming from your computer will actually be shared on your webcast. As a default, if you're just sharing PowerPoint slides, this is not necessary. If I hit Share, 
I am now sharing my entire screen and it tells me right here. To stop the share, I just hit the stop share button. Two other features. Uh, we have Manage Participants. If you click on Manage Participants, you can actually see all of the people that are there. A really, really great feature is this Mute All button. If it gets to be a little bit too loud and people accidentally turn their microphones on, you can actually mute everybody. And if you click on that, you'll also notice that there's an option right here to allow participants to unmute themselves, which you can turn off so that you can just talk and then unmute it manually after so you can get questions. Now, regarding questions, if people don't want to have all these mics on that are live, you can also do questions through chat. There's a group chat right here that says either to everyone or you can go just to the presenter if you want and type in messages right here. And this will go out to everybody. So once you're done again, we're going to hit stop recording. And the recording is now stop. You'll notice in the top, it gives you a little notice here that says you receive an email when cloud recording is available. This is the email that you've set up in your online account, which should be your Cambrian email. And this can take anywhere from a few minutes to several hours. Longer recordings do take longer. If you check your email, you'll see an email, something like this from Zoom once your recording is done. In that information, it says your recording is now available. This is the name that you called it. So this is the link that you can copy and paste into whatever program you're using in your Moodle shell or what have you. You can also share this information with your students so that they can access the recordings online. Now when you click on a link to actually view a recording, what will come up is a, a video that looks a lot like this. And you'll notice down here one of the interesting things that we can do is these little scissors right here, a little edit button. If we click on that, we can actually set our in and out points. So for example, if you start your meeting and there's three or four minutes of just kind of dead air off the top and you don't want people to have to sit through all that, you can actually go through and change the end point. Uh, this one here is only a few frames long. It's only 10 frames long. But right now I just change it so it starts frame one. It's, you know, basically and then stops early. And if I click on save, when you now send this link to everybody else, it'll always start and stop at the same spot. The nice thing about this though is that it's non-destructive, which means that if you go back to the edit button, you can actually change it back to the original and you haven't actually deleted anything from your original. So this is a really handy thing if you need to just kind of cut the top and tail of your video to so that it starts and ends uh, sooner when the actual content begins. Another great feature of Zoom is that there's actually an app written for mobile devices. So if you have an iPhone or an Android device or a tablet, you can access it through that. So hopefully that gets you up and running with Zoom. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to contact us at the Hub.